So is this some kind of math club? You ever studied blackjack? Are you talking about counting cards? As a team, yes. When? Weekends. When? So you want to play blackjack like a pro? Do you think you have what it takes to bring down the house? We'll see. Let's start at the beginning with a little history of the game. Like many beautiful and, and aggravating things, the history of blackjack can be attributed to the French. Around 1700, a popular card game called Vingt et Un, or 21, originated in French casinos. It sounds a little similar to what we know as blackjack, but the rules were actually kind of different. In that game, the goal was to get a natural 21 through multiple rounds of betting. It was only when it was imported to the US in the 1800s that it developed into the game we know today. Oh! So, how do you play blackjack like a pro? We all know the object of the game is to get as close to 21 without busting. Two cards are dealt, and if you're lucky, you get that magical combination of a face or a 10 and an ace. But if not, you do your best to get as close to 21 without going over. So what is so special about this game? Many men have asked that question. One man that attempted to answer that question was mathematician Roger Baldwin. In 1956, he, along with some other number-crunching buddies, published a paper called The Optimum Strategy in Blackjack. This later evolved into what we know as basic strategy. Basic strategy is a set of rules to play by that if adhered to will lessen the casino's winning edge to less than 1%. Here you see a chart for basic strategy. And this particular chart is for a common six to eight deck game you'd find in Las Vegas where the dealer has to hit on soft 17. It's a 17 that includes an ace being counted as 11. You're allowed to double after splitting cards. You're allowed to split aces multiple times. You can only get one card dealt when you split aces and blackjack pays three to two. Did you get any of that? If you look at the left side, you'll see every combination of what hand you could be dealt. And if you look at the top, you see what the dealer's up card is. All you have to do is follow what the chart tells you to do, and in this case, you would lower the casino's advantage to only 0.44%, or 44 cents for every $100 played over a long average. You're good with that, right? All right, guess what? You still lose it. You know, even if you got this thing memorized perfectly, at best, you're at a 1% disadvantage to the house. So how do we fix that? Well, that's where me and my friends can help you out. We can show you how to turn the advantage around to benefit you. Blackjack, unlike any other game, has a history and a future. The cards that have been dealt absolutely influence the cards that will be dealt. So how do you make this work for you? Through counting cards. You might say, I can't count cards. I can barely keep my checkbook balanced. But you would be wrong. It might sound like you have to memorize every card that comes out of the deck, but in reality, all you really need to do is add and subtract. This system is called the plus one, minus one balanced system. In this strategy, cards two through six are given a, a value of plus one, seven through nine are zero, they're neutral, and all tens, face cards, and aces are given a value of minus one. Now, as the cards are dealt, all you have to do is add or minus one to keep a count. I mean, for example... If you're sitting at the table with five players and a dealer, if the dealer deals the following hands, king two, seven, six, two, five, three, nine, a blackjack, and an up card of five for themselves. Okay? Now you simply go down the line and add it up. King is minus one, and two is plus one, so that cancels itself out to zero. Now you just go down the line. Six, seven, plus one. Two, five, now you're up to plus three. Three, nine, now you got plus four. Blackjack takes you down to a plus two, and the dealer's up card makes it a total of plus three. There's one more thing you have to take into consideration. How many cards are left in the shoe? If you're playing at a table with six decks, the most common, then all you have to do is look over at the shoe and estimate how many decks are left. For example, say you've been playing for a while and you have a count of plus 10, and you look over to the shoe and it appears to have two decks left in it. That means your true count is plus five, or the true count is the card counted divided by the number of decks left in the shoe. So what do you do now? Well, I mean, it's really pretty simple, actually. When the count is high, that means the deck is stacked with the high cards, and you're more likely to get a blackjack or a high hand and win. And when the count is low, you're more likely to get a low hand and have a better chance of busting out. Anything over a true count of plus 10, you raise your bet, and anything under, play the minimums. That's all there is to it. A disclaimer. Most times, the cards will work themselves back to a zero count or something close to that. It will be very rare that you come across a shoe that will have a count to your advantage. But if you play long enough and smart enough and you can keep the concentration up, 
you might just come across that one shoe you'll tell your grandkids about. So remember, card counting takes concentration and diligence, and while it might not be illegal, casinos don't exactly encourage it. The most important thing to do when you're playing or you're card counting is to have fun and play within your means. If we can help you be a better player and win more often, then we've done our job. 